assalamu alaikum everyone and good evening uh, i am zainab isaji and on behalf of isha soktara i welcome you all in today's uh, webinar which is the impact of digitization and covid-19 on relationships which is led by zofishon uh, before we start the webinar i just want to share the how the 60 minutes webinar will be following we have uh, we will be having a talk by our lead speaker zofishon hasib uh followed by that then we'll be having uh by the closing uh, of the session will be given by dr kamran yami uh, he will share some of his insights on the said subject i just want to like share some of the housekeeping rules uh, in today's webinar for the today's webinar which is uh, i would request all the participants to be on the listen only mode and uh, if they want to ask any questions or anything they can type it in the chat box and we'll take it towards the end of the session The webinar is being recorded and it's been live streaming on our Facebook page also. Uh, you will be getting a digital certificate uh, on on your participation on your full participation, and there will be a memorable click will be taken towards the end. So at that time, I will request you all to uh, on your camera also for a good click. Now, uh, during pandemic. Uh, TCS Octara came up with a uh, with a digital platform to web uh, to WhatsApp groups by the name of TCS Octara Web Mall Plus and made in web made in Pakistan Web Mall of Phoenix Rising. These both groups are the brainchild of our CEO Jamil Janjua. In TCS Octara Web Mall Plus, we share our uh, all the learnings of they are like uh, they are available on they are free learnings which are like webinars. virtual trainings digit on a future trends then uh, we talk about newsletters there are blogs also over there and it's a the daily thing which we share on the whatsapp and also it's been emailed to all the members so that they can like log in from there and they can watch it from their laptop also and there's another group by the name of made in pakistan web mall which is a phoenix rising over here all the participants even us we share positive achievements in pakistan and by the pakistanis if you guys want to register for this you can like scan the qr code and the link is over also over there so that you guys can register and be a member of these groups now i just want as we shared about the what about the brain child of our jamil janju our ceo now i would like to share a brief video by him talking about what octara is hi hello my name is uh, jamil janjua and i'm the ceo of tcs octara octara is a company that belongs to the tcs group of family and it has established a enviable reputation as being one of the leading executive trading service providers in pakistan a large part of our success is attributed to our chairman mr khalid wan whose personal commitment to encourage the development of the people at both tcs and at the pakistan level it has been very very uh, stimulating and very very inspiring for us we take great pride in delivering high quality learning experiences which are based on extensive research of training needs after which programs are created working with the best possible trainer the content developed to address the needs then marketed as a series of leadership acceleration programs and finally delivered ensuring all logistics is taken care of to ensure a high quality learning experience our team motto at octara is to help you succeed Thank you. like to introduce you to the lead speaker of the day zofisha hasib but she has already like cut in of herself but i just want to share some of her credentials with you guys uh, she is a seasoned corporate trainer life coach development psychologist and women empowerment activist 
So Afisha this year, she is celebrating her Silver Jubilee in training and development industry. She has been conducting webinars and e-talks for self-development in senior to middle level executives for public and private organizations during this COVID times. She's a CEO of Intech Solutions UAE and has been associated with TCS Octara for more than a decade. Over to you, Zofisha. Thank you, Zainab. Can you confirm that you can see and hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, perfect. All right, let's begin. This topic is very close to my heart um, because uh, from a psychological point of view, being a developmental psychologist, it has really, really been uh, an eye opener for me how the world is actually trying to cope with COVID. And thank you, Oktara. Thank you, JJ. Thank you, Mariam and the team for inviting me to speak my heart out at this. All right. So we are in exciting times, actually. History will write about us, our successes, our failures, about COVID. And we are all COVID survivors, right? Whether we, we got, God forbid, the COVID uh, virus or not, but we are all survivors. So the first thing I would like to say to all the 40 plus participants that have joined in today's webinar, give yourself a pat on the back, guys. Well done. You survived. Most of the people did not. Good. Well, I'm Nabi. I'm glad you're, you're following the instructions. <laughs> so we are all COVID survivors because it has impacted each and every person of all ages. And, you know, it started off as a health crisis, but the impact has exceeded the health crisis. COVID-19 has had an impact of course, after the health crisis on the economics. And the economics has had impact on our, psych on our psyche, on our emotional health. It has become a psychological crisis more than a health crisis, et cetera, et cetera. So we cannot look at it from its origin. We have to go a little beyond that. I've tried to, because I have less time and you know how trainers, they love to speak. So <laughs> I've tried to organize uh, today's talk into three categories. The pros and cons of COVID-19, impact on relationships, which is the most important, and of course, the lessons learned, which will be part of the, of the pros and cons as well. So I usually like to get rid of the uh, cons first because uh, let's get the negatives out of the way first. All right. Okay. So what do you think were the cons? Other than uh, totally the fear factor, etc. The most important is we, we realized that what we desired or wanted was not what we needed. Interesting that I'm saying that. Please take a moment to understand what I'm trying to portray here. What we wanted or what we desired was something that we did not need. And before I go on explaining that, I'd like to quote my favorite author since childhood, since the age of seven, Oscar Wilde. He had a very interesting satire to everything. And he said, when the gods want to punish you, they answer all your prayers. So what were we complaining about before COVID hit us? What were we desiring? Oh my God. And I used to hear it all the time in my trainings that there's no work-life balance. Haseeb, Zofi, please tell us how we can achieve work-life balance. I don't see my kids. When I leave office, they are leaving for school. When I come back, they are ready for bed. I don't get to see my children. My wife is always complaining that I don't give her enough time. The commute, oh my God, with this traffic and uh, uh, the times when uh, everybody is going back and forth to their work, it's so much traffic. The commute is terrible. I have a micromanaging boss and he's always looking over my shoulder. And what else? I share the workspace with like awful colleagues. They are so loud and I can't concentrate. 
I hate my job. What was the result, guys? Work from home. Answer to everybody's prayers. I, I'm going to be there. Apparently, it's going to be work-life balance. I'll see my kids all the time. Oh, what fun times. Little did we know what was going to happen. And it had an impact on all relationships. What are the different two primary relationships is professional relationships and personal relationship. I'll come to the personal later. We are still in the cons, guys, by the way. I Just a reminder. What impact did it have on the professional relationships? Uh, it's called mob psychology. It was the combined insecurity of people that hit us. And we became more insecure of each other. We became more insecure of our future. And lack of the physical contact uh, actually made it worse because we couldn't talk it out. I mean, we'd sit in the office, the annoying colleagues, et cetera. At least we would get a break and we talk about the grape wine. But now what happened? No water cooler meetings, no grape wine. Meetings after meetings happened. And that had an impact on our relationship. You're talking and you're still, pardon me, listening to a screen. That physical aspect was missing and it had an impact on my own psyche and made me more and more insecure. Of course, with the COVID economic crisis, with the stress on the organizations, not having, it was like a chaos situation. The chaos theory actually came to life in front of us. Uh, some people, what happened in uh, professional relationships, some people got exposed. And we'll talk about it a little later as well, because we are talking about the cons. So maybe under a pile of paper, my manager in his room there, ah, I was not exposed of certain areas of focus. I mean, I had eight hours and then I could put some things under the carpet. But now in meetings, Things had to be more streamlined. Then what impact did it have? It was the screen time stress. You know, screen time causes stress. Our optimum stress levels rose. And that had an impact on both personal and professional relationship. You know, my favorite meme on COVID-19 was, can we uninstall 2020? Because it has a virus. Yes, it has a, had a virus, not only in the physical sense, but the virus actually infiltrated our brains because we let it impact our psyche. Now we'll talk about the impact on personal relationships, which was greater than the professional relationship. Why? Because our emotions are involved. So personal impact on personal relationship, it's a new ball game altogether. Let me share with you, all of you, and please share it with the other people as well. There was a beast in the house. There was a beast in the house. The people became totally alienated rather than COVID actually strengthening the relationship. It broke people apart. And the reason being the unresolved issues of the past started emerging. What should have happened never happened. It was part of uh, the promotion of this talk. What should have happened? I'll share with you. Usually in crisis times, families get together. I can, I mean, I was two years old in 1965. I am just changing the Wi-Fi to my dongle. I hope you can see me. Yes, we can see you. Okay, great, great. I had a backup because you don't know with the Wi-Fi, et cetera. So I was talking about the beast, the, the man of the family, the father. He became like a beast because the family members could not identify with that. I was talking about the 1971 war, war situations, chaos. It always brings families together, but this time it wasn't there because the head of the household could not 
control his stress either. He was being burdened down by the stress of his job, of his concern for his family's health. God forbid, uh, I hope my parents don't contract the virus. I hope my kids are safe. Oh, do this. I have to secure. Over responsibility, actually, it was bigger than life responsibility and not the means to actually handle that caused an ordinary, nice human being to turn into the beast. And what did happen to the kids? The kids became monsters. They were little monsters in my house. Oh my God, who are these people? These are not, these kind of perceptions about each other actually had the greatest impact. The mom, poor thing, whether she was a working mom or she was a housewife, uh, she became overworked. She had to handle the school education online on one room and then cater to have some peace and quiet for the husband to be uh, on, on his meetings and Zoom, etc. Uh, do you know that divorce rates skyrocket? Because people, everybody was there 24 seven in each other's faces. You know, for eight hours at least, whatever, whatever I'm using the word weaknesses or bad habits or bad behaviors that the dad had, he would go to the office. So, you know, there was a little time, only a few hours when he came back from the office. The kids would be at school, the mom would get a break, but the psychological impact of Again. They are hidden from us. They are in our shadow, according to Carl Jung. So these started emerging. Trust me when I say that I, my phone was constantly ringing with cries of help. I have never had so many people reach out to me uh, in anxiety and depression and not knowing what to do. Uh, they wanted therapy. They wanted sessions. They wanted advice. So it was a combined psychological impact that it had but i'll tell you the the quality family time became quantity family time and it became a nightmare for for everybody and we didn't know how to handle the kids didn't know how to handle that the parents are always there and you know how there's less communication in the family as it is other than instructive why aren't you doing this? Why are you not on your online class? What are you doing? So it became a constant instructions on the kids. <laughs> Far away in quarantine, never craving another person. And actually the impact, I'll, I'll share my own personal impact. Which was that, you know, I'm a very sociable person, but all of a sudden, I, I feel that this was a much peaceful place, not mountains, but staying away. Because, you know, family drama bhi dur ho gaya, mulakat nahi honi hai, uh, work is, you know, at, at your pace whenever you want to do. So that became like a hermit syndrome. And a lot of people now, when... Um, whenever the curve flattens, COVID curve, they have forgotten how to interact with people. That was the biggest. And that was my next thing, which I was going to talk about, that because we couldn't meet our extended family, which were perhaps in other towns, et cetera, and friends, we, we developed a certain introverted hermit syndrome. And on the opposite, what happened? This cabin fever, one cabin, you know, people come to our mountains and they, it's like a jailbreak. You know, as like that, jail already the hotels and everything, they have started becoming full. But the impact, I cannot say that there is a, a, the same impact on everybody, but try to see 
what impact did COVID have on your relationships? Perhaps actually they improved. But overall, kya tha? Ke a toxic environment ban gaya tha. And as I said, uh, divorce rate started going up. The other, the other negatives was the domestic violence rose, not only in the developing countries, but in, in Europe and other, other places as well. We were getting all the research that that happened. And it was pushing everybody to the edge. Uh, relationship pe ye baat ho rahi hai to isliye main ye aap se share karungi that who what were the personality of people which uh, impacted their relationship the most you know there are two kinds of mindsets one is fixed and the other is growth or resilient mindset fixed mindset people who were very dogmatic opinionated my way on or the highway they got impacted both in their professional relationships and in their personal relationship. You know that the dinosaurs didn't survive kiye the over the ages. They were the biggest and the most uh, strongest, but because they could not adapt, the only species that survives actually is the one who can adapt to different situations. And we have seen over, over millions of years, all the species and especially human beings in the last uh, so many thousands of years is once they adapt to the environment, they survive more. And this begins the first pros of COVID-19 overall as well in general plus relationships is that we became, we came to know our resilience. How weak are we and how powerful are we actually? That was it. Another good thing is logon ka faith bad gaya. everybody started thinking of, of their divine powers. So asking for divine help, reaching out, that helped. We became we we became more in gratitude. We, we started practicing gratitude. Why? Because the things that we always took for granted, like going to the market to buy something or just going across uh, to your friends without really making a plan, dropping children to school, even getting out of the house. These were the things that we took for granted. Now we started appreciating the little things in life. Fake personas were shattered. Finally, facade. The big facade we put, especially in our professional relationships, big chairs in some government organization, uh, to say how important that particular seat is. Those fake, fake uh, facades were shattered and reduced to a quiet corner in the house. Everybody's on their laptops or on their phone. The hierarchy became less. Flexi times, which millennials always used to, the youngsters in my trainings always used to ask me. Uh, finally, there was uh, a hope for the future that there could be flexi timings, there could be work from home. It's not necessary that there should be a physical space. And this is actually uh, innovative that, you know, perhaps in a few years, it will be still, it is going on. But when we are, we are rid of this pandemic, then option will be, given do you want to work from home do you want flexi hours do you want physical space that is a good option for hr to be presenting between uh, before a new recruit uh, genuine relationships at home as well not fake we started building genuine relationship just for a second go on um, uh, in the past 18 months 17 months actually and see have your relationships improved? Have you started communicating genuinely? Have you started understanding your partner, your children, your boss, the leader of the organization better? Because uh, uh, the illusion has been dropped. We are all in it together. So this is a starting point to building genuine relationships. Another non-relationship thing is the earth finally breathed. You know, the smog became less in Lahore. Uh, every every uh, 
where you went because lack of smoke, etc. That has an impact, even if it was for a little while, the lockdowns and everything, it gives a breathing space to earth, to our cities, etc. We started becoming more hygienic, cleaner, masks. I used to hear that, you know, uh, whenever, uh, especially Southeast Asia, anybody gets a cold, I'm talking about 20, 30 years ago when we were in Singapore, they would wear a mask. We had never even thought about it. Now we can at least start practicing what we have learned in COVID. We don't go anywhere without a hand sanitizer. We are careful of what we touch. We have even helped uh, the domestic help to become more hygienic. We have started taking care of each and every aspect of our health. We've started improving our immune system because, hey, nobody knows why some people get COVID, why the others don't, despite in the vicinity of other patients. So we started taking care of our health. And loving others begins with self-love first. You have to take care of yourself before you start taking care of other people. In the organizations, they started seeing when um, the overheads became less, they have started thinking that what can be done to reduce their overheads. People started hobbies. People started hobbies as a family as well. As he was telling me about uh, one of our friends in Engro, he started gardening again. And not only himself, but he has involved his family members with it as well. Rather than sitting and watching TV in front of the, uh, everybody and having food, people start doing things together. I started creative arts over here just on my own and enjoying it very much. Another pro is we all became tech savvy. Of course, we still struggle with it, but uh, the baby boomers and the Generation X who knew quite a bit because uh, uh, computers came in our life at least for me in back in 1987, where there weren't, weren't even any uh, windows. It was uh, DOS operated, but everybody became tech savvy. We've picked up a skill because we've been forced to it. That is the biggest pro. Now, at least we can take chances with whatever device, with computer, without uh, the hesitation. True leaders emerged, and that is the biggest thing. In chaos, in crisis, true leaders emerge and they don't have to be the head of the organization. That had a great impact on our, on our own progress, on our own career. On one hand, I said people got exposed because uh, the meetings after meetings, what they said, what they could handle in stress. So, you know, what the best thing was that usually the managers or senior management, they like to give a test of time to uh, the juniors, the subordinate. This was a perfect test of time imposed on us by this global pandemic. And we got to see how much strength each and every employee in the organization has. And that is why some true leaders actually emerged. Uh, SOPs, which hadn't been there in dinosaur organizations, finally got redefined. Time to see how strong is our organization. It was a great rehearsal for future, uh, future of the organization. If we can't handle this, how can we handle other things that might come our way? Finally, people started living with uncertainty because we all are scared of future. So we were faced with this uncertainty and we started our coping mechanism, some good, some not so good. Reflective times, psychologically speaking, of course, we've been seeing it after we exhausted all the discussions on WhatsApp group about how much percentage of COVID and everything. After we were done sick and tired of those, finally, we started reflecting on ourselves. How have I emerged? Um, how has my behavior been? How well can I handle the stress? Can I work under stress, etc.? Another big pro that happened was entrepreneurship. So many young entrepreneurs, uh, especially in the food industry, especially in the career industry, IT, though, hey, it's always been there, but in, in technology as well. 
Actually, it was a kind of a rehearsal for Armageddon. I say, you know, my kids watch all these shows um, about the future, sci-fi, dystopia. Hey, I think we did well. We survived the dystopia in actuality. Cutting edge innovation during this time. We have innovated. We started our... Dr. Kamran Yameen, uh, can you take the lead on this for some time? Till she comes back. So Dr. Kamran Yameen, he's a basically, he's had 23 years of training and developing experience in pharma industry and he's worked in renowned MNCs like Pfizer, Sanofi and GSK. He has a, he's a like European certified leadership trainer, a French certified coach, a Turkish certified HR consultant. And his keen interest is in organizational and people's development. Kamran Saab, uh, you can like Take the floor now. Okay, Dana. Thank you for your kind words. Assalamu alaikum and very good evening, uh, dear participants. Uh, interesting discussion is going on, and I think Zofisha is back. Okay. Zofisha, are you back or shall I continue? No, she's not there. She's not there. Okay. I think 18th century, I'll, I'll, um, I'll be, my conversation will be a mix of English and Urdu as well. Uh, in the 18th century, Lama Iqbal has said a lot of fun that is viable for today. He said that for the heart of the death, machines of the government. For the heart of the death, machines of the government are given to the government. तो वो शायद यही डिजिटलाइजेशन की बात कर रहे थे और एहसास से मुरब्बत हमारा डे टू डे एक्टिविटी ही था और जो दिल की मौत थी उससे गालिबन वो बात कर रहे थे उस एंजाइटी की जो प्रेशन की उस मैनियर कंडीशन की उस ऑल्ट मूड ऑल्ट्रेशन की उस वरिड जो अफसुर्दगी वाली कैफियत होती है उनकी इश्यू ह so Ren Martin's first step was that man is a social animal. Now, if you remove one of the social animals, then it becomes that man is an animal, which is not visible. The problem is that the access of digitalization, especially in COVID era, we were sitting at home, and we were also studying the same way. So that the whole thing has been done with COVID. And we have reduced the socializing, and we have reduced the socializing. अब हुआ ये उसका अंजाम कि दूसरे शहरों में रहने वाले, दूसरे मोहल्लों में रहने वाले, इवन एक ही घर में रहने वाले बहुत सारे घर के अफराद भी एक दूसरे से फेसबुक पे मिलने लगे। तो डेट वाज़ द डायलेमा। हम जब तक एक दूसरे से बात नहीं करेंगे, जब तक फेस टू फेस इंटरेक्शन नहीं करेंगे, हर गुजरते दिन के साथ तो फिशा ने बात की मिलेनियल्स की बेबी बूमर्स की वो मिलेनियल और बेबी बूमर्स इसी वजह से एक दूसरे से भी बहुत करीब नहीं है अब अगर वो मिलते भी हैं तो पहले जमाना होता था हम बाहर जाते थे और फिर खाना खाते थे अब हमारी तफरी ही महज खाना खानी है हम बाहर जाते हैं इस वजह Overall bad habits, and we are talking in general about uh, subcontinent habits. Jaina, uh, can you hear me? I can hear you. Uh, I think our kids are watching video on. Okay. Chi. So, now the question is that these all the stresses, these all the issues, these all the problems that were our, they had the ultimate consequences. What happened? Consequences were that in general. हमारी जेनरेशन जो है हम मिलेनियल्स की भी बात करें और हम बेबी बूमर्स की भी बात करें और वो उससे भी पहले वाली जेनरेशन एक्स और वाई जेनरेशन की भी उसमें एक फियर है एक एंजाइटी है एक एप्रिहेंशन है एक अनजाना खौफ है एप्रिहेंशन ऑफ अननोन वो है और ये सब कुछ बढ़ गया ड्यूरिंग कोविड Yes, socio-political things are in their own place. All of them are in their own place. I will not be able to do that. Now, we will focus on all of our relationships during the last two years, especially. 
कोविड और अभी भी मैं पोस्ट कोविड इसलिए नहीं कह सकता कि वो फिर मजीद स्ट्रेन आ रहे हैं और पता नहीं अब मजीद क्या होता है सारी चीजों में तो यस ओवरऑल हम फ्रस्ट्रेटेड है आप एक लम्हे के लिए सिग्नल पर रुकी आपके पीछे से हॉर्न ब्लो होने लगेगा आप रेड लाइट पर रुकते हैं मैं स्पेशली कराची आइट्स की बात कर रहा हूँ और भी बड़े शहरों में पाकिस्तान के ये हो ही रहा है कि आप रेड लाइट पर रुकते हैं और पीछे से आपको हॉर्न ब्लो होता है और लोग कहते हैं कि चलिए आगे चलो कुछ नहीं है जी तो आ, हम कानून शायद सिर्फ इसलिए नहीं तोड़े आ, इस आ, के लोग आ, अब देखने वाले नहीं है इन इन जनरल तो हमारी इशू क्या हुआ है कि हमारी नींदें पूरी नहीं हो रही वी हैव मैटर ऑफ स्लीप डिस्टर्बेंसेज वी हैव नाइट वी आर वर्ड We 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 are anxious, we are frustrated, we are depressed. इसलिए कि हमें फियर ऑफ अनोन है हमें मुस्तबिल के अंदेशे बहुत बढ़ गए हैं येस कॉर्पोरेट वर्ल्ड पे आई वर्क विद कॉपोरेट कॉपोरेट वर्ल्ड पे डाउन साइजिंग भी हो रही है कॉस्ट कट डाउन भी हो रही है प्रॉब्लम भी हो रही है ये सारी चीजें अपनी जगह लेकिन इसमें बहुत सारी चीजें हमारी खुद साख्ता भी है और आई ट्राई टू कम अप विद सोल्यूशन ये तो सब अपनी जगह नेगेटिविटी है उसका जिक्र करें या ना करें बट इट्स देयर आप उसको माने या ना माने वो नेगेटिविटी है आ, हम बहुत कम मुस्कुराते हैं हम बहुत कम हंसते हैं अगर आप टीवी शोज भी अब देख लें तो पाकिस्तानी टीवी शोज में कितने टीवी शोज ऐसे हैं जिसमें कॉमेडी का कंसर है ऐसा कुछ भी नहीं है ठीक है तो हम ओवरऑल हंसना मुस्कुराना हमने कम कर दिया है हम चिड़चिड़े हो गए अब वॉट टू डू मसले का हल क्या है मसले का हल नंबर वन हमें अपनी लाइफ को थोड़ा सा डिसिप्लिन करना होगा इन जनरल हम बहुत देर तक सोते हैं बहुत देर तक सोते हैं और बहुत देर से सोते हैं वी नीड टू डिसिप्लिन आर लाइफ इन ईच एंड एवरी एस्पेक्ट जैनब Can you hear me, uh, Dr. Kamran? Uh, since Zofisha is back, hi Zofisha. Uh, hi. Many public will go and push it. Thank you for taking over. I was taka. absent. My, my pleasure. You're okay, welcome. gentlemen. I'll try my level best to to speak in English. Since I think few guests, a few foreigners are there, uh, I miss that. Uh, so yes, for, we need to discipline ourselves, our life. Uh, we do have, we do not have currently the uh, discipline in waking up, in going to. Uh, especially in ter- during the time of covid um uh, we were not following our routine in terms of waking up going to bed breakfast and other meals timing to so kindly discipline yourself do wear proper dress while you are working from home uh, i should suggest if to have your cologne comb your hairs uh, do not uh, um, attend your office while working from home in your night suits and thing like that because it will create a sense of lethargy within yourself and ladies and gentlemen please do exercise daily and exercise doesn't mean you you go to the gym or um, you are uh, having dumbbells and some sort of thing or you are running or jogging do stretch yourself for 5 minute for 10 minute if you have a open terrace just go there try to stretch try to have some skipping exercises try to have some skipping rope Uh, try to um, walk in a park, in a garden, or on the roadside, uh, but with your mobiles not in your hand. Be be aware of Karachi Heights, especially. Uh, the blue that you recommend: one uh, fifty minutes of moderate to mild exercise per week, and seventy five minutes or seventy five minutes of vigorous exercise per week, which means fifteen minutes in five days time. If you are exercising. Five days a week, just fifteen minute vigorous exercise, or just thirty minute mild to moderate exercise would be enough for you. And my dear friend, you can have breathing exercises. Uh, you can Google; it, there is no rocket science into it. Control breathing exercises can help you a lot. Can help you um, uh, make you away from your uh, stresses and your frustrations and your anxiety. It, it will reduce your anxiety level. Control breathing exercises. Inhaling and exhaling, inhaling and exhaling, but in a controlled manner. Very important aspect. I have seen in myself um, many of our friends. They they were trying to keeping themselves updated regarding the COVID situation. Of mine is in India. The one is in Bangladesh, and they are daily updating me three times a day about the COVID condition. This is not a cricket. This is not a football game. You don't need to to have a running commentary on the COVID deaths or the COVID incidences. Okay, it's there. 
once in a blue moon is okay but why taking why uh, um, having the number all the time it it will create a panic situation for you it, you yourself will be panicky and you will again again cascading this panic to others also try to spend Dr. time Kamran, with nature i have a yes? question i have a question oh, yes. of here. oh you were there uh, just imagine <laughs> if uh, if this covid situation had happened where uh, we did not have internet this had happened 30 years ago or even 40 yes. years ago do you think the yes. panic would have been less because you know news Certainly, takes yes. their time to reach as well and that is what was happening that of course i'm not saying it wasn't life threatening or a huge pandemic but the impact was more because constant i mean our brains really? short circuited short circuited yes. yes. so much information your and that was the biggest con that even if you didn't want to be i swear i did not open any videos uh, after march 20th because i'd had enough i can't do anything about it <clears throat> so me just knowing how many people died i take precautions and everything but i it should not be like a sword looming over my head and that was the biggest con that impacted the psyche of people absolutely actually we are our own enemy do we trust me humse bada hamara dushman koi nahi hai one of my one of my colleague is he is discussing just today Okay, Dr. Kamran, as a, as a, uh, he was taking a medical advice, although uh, I'm not a very practicing doctor, I did work, I, I'm working with the pharmaceutical, but I, I do not attend any clinic. So uh, he was saying, uh, whenever I got my email on my mobile at night time, uh, at night time, I got palpitation. I simply <laughs> asked him, why you are opening your mobile at night for your email, for your official emails? who is persuading you to do so he said it's just my professional curiosity that is pushing me to open my official email at 12 am i mean at 12 at night why you are opening your official mail so we are our own enemy our worst enemy ignorance is blessing you feel at times so i think you will agree to my point that if it happened way back before internet or before mobile phone thing would not be uh, that worse yeah yeah <laughs> i mean so, my so my this, Yeah. Sorry, yeah. sorry. Finish and I'll wrap it up. Nani, I was okay. going to say that uh, you know uh, the final two uh, pros. Sorry, guys. Sure. All all the people who've joined us. I'm sorry. The light went. I tried my dongle. I apologize for being missing in action. But Dr. Kamran took over perfectly, and that was our plan. I had pre-warned them about that as well. The biggest. pros was that finally you started observing yourself it was a self awareness journey which will have an impact there has to be a way forward into the future so there are two which i greatly greatly appreciate one uh, quoting uh, socrates that an unexamined life is not worth living we got to examine ourselves we got to know ourselves to quite an extent and the biggest was that our kids matured we have been after their life that they don't have the maturity you know you know they've not gone through the grind our kids kids matured without without us having to pay for their training and send them somewhere that is one of the biggest thing actually and the final is that you are you all we all rather became survivors a warrior and we have we don't know what the future holds but now we are learning and by slow baby steps we have learned to adapt and i think the main uh, thing is that we have now become more inclined towards living with uncertainty way forward on relationships is what kamran was also saying you need to start meditating guys you need to start exercising every day if you don't have place 10 15 minutes of yoga just stretching take out that anxiety and then it will help you to be able to maintain your relationship and to have some sanity so the best thing forward is start exercising do some yoga and meditate thank you that was all if there are any questions kamran you'll have to read them out Sophie, to me Sophie, shall i add shall i add one two comments yes, what mazey ki baat ye hai ke hamara jo spare time hai 
our spare time so during the weekend acho we are all of us are tired of our digital savviness of our laptops of our gadgets of our mobiles of our ipads and during the weekend uh, imagine how we spend our weekend uh, by yeah. watching netflix movies movies on netflix yeah, yeah. and by playing pubg so again on the same uh, on the same uh, uh, black hole again in the same black hole so my humble request to our participants please try your level best to close to be close to the nature do walk do exercise good quality food not the junk food do sleep normally come back to nature come back to normal natural life and you will feel better logo se baat kare jab aap baat karte hain na but no controversial talk no politics no uh, no religious talk नो कॉन्ट्रोवर्शियल टॉक लड़ने की बात नहीं कर रहा अच्छी अच्छी बातें करें मजे मजे की बातें करें स्टोरी टेलिंग हमारे पहले बुजुर्ग स्टोरी टेलिंग करते थे ना शाम में बैठते थे तो वो कितना पुरसकून रहते थे तो जितना आप नेचर से करीब होंगे उतना आप पुरसकून रहेंगे जितना आप नेचर से दूर जाएंगे उतना आप यही टेंशन एंगजाइटी डिप्रेशन में रहेंगे एंड वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट थिंग दैट माई डियर फ्रेंड्स जैजेस आर फॉर यू You are not for gadgets. तो अपने आप को वो डिजिटल वर्ल्ड से बाहर निकाल कर आइए हम ह्यूमन बींग है नेचुरल नॉर्मल ह्यूमन बींग है हम रोबोट्स नहीं है ठीक है तो विद आई एम ओपन फॉर एनी क्वेश्चन No, no, please read out the questions. I would okay. love to answer. I I was thinking like first we should take the group picture and then we should start the question answers. Is that okay? Yeah, sure. Everybody yeah. turn on the uh, videos. Yeah. Are you saying that? Yeah, everybody okay, should cool. turn on the videos. And my colleague Sare Mati, he will be clicking the picture. Let me see everybody. Nice. Sare, over oh, to beautiful. you. You will guide us. Let us you, know. You guys look all so beautiful. <laughs> I I recognize some familiar faces quite a few actually hi guys nice to see you again okay i'm ali ali is saying that it's quite late in the night in australia oh sorry ali <laughs> but thank you for joining us sorry we are done we are done thank you Thank you. Uh, We're done. Okay. So Is let it, me take the question. Yeah. Yes, please. There's a question from Asma Omar. What do you think would be the best strategies to manage personal and professional life wearing different hats? Uh, actually, you know, uh, the main con of COVID was. that for people who were not organized who were not in the habit of goal setting who were not planners uh, they found it very difficult to wear different hats and juggle responsibilities and even multitask so everything has to be planned that's what we learned uh, you know uh, luck favors the prepared so if we are not prepared then we go totally bonkers planning not only in the professional life but in the personal life how am i going to keep the family members happy what atmosphere should be there right to the end a kind of a planning planning our professional life planning our personal life planning our leisure time planning our hobbies it can fall on any member who wants to take responsibility so primarily we need to put planning into each every aspect some people say that there's no spontaneity if we if we plan out everything no planning makes spontaneity even better because one thing doesn't work we have another so planning is uh, of juggling different responsibilities or wearing different hats i've worn different hats myself i'm a psychologist i'm a mother i'm a wife i'm a corporate trainer these are oh and my hobbies i'm i'm a chef i love i have another business i'm an entrepreneur so all of these things once you get used to it you plan it it becomes so much easier and life becomes more interesting rather than boring there's another same question from asma 
She's saying share one of the most important learning of life to win healthy relationships. Three things. First is communication. Second is communication. And third is communication. Now there are Super. different types of communication. Uh, we, we usually, uh, let's say with kids, with kids communication is more instructional rather than brainstorming, rather than telling them what to do. We should ask them questions. They are intelligent beings. We, we just try to dominate them by telling them they do as I say, not as I do. Uh, etc. With kids, with spouses, with family members, communication, not putting up a fake thing. And as I said, all our fake relationships were exposed during this time. So communication, true, honest, heartfelt communication. The only problem is within families, the atmosphere is not there. There is no safe space. If the kids counter argue, we take, uh, take it as argument or that they're being aggressive. They don't have a safe space to actually talk about things. People don't share their inner feelings. If only the man of the household had shared the stresses he's going through and why he's angry, maybe the family, it would have had less of a negative impact on the family. So communications are of various types, but nothing works better. It's our body language, how we talk, what my tone is of communication, either we can make a friend of the other person or we can totally alienate. And that's what happened in all our different things. So as I said, and calm, most important is that you take a breath and then you communicate. There are differences. I don't have much time, but there are differences uh, in reacting and responding. We usually react from our emotional brain that creates more problems and evokes a negative uh, reaction from the other people. Responding is more logical and that needs to be planned as well. So everything like become, become like a planner in your professional life. You'll be pulled up the corporate ladder, because there is a dearth of planners anyway. So start planning your communication, set up a place, make it an interesting place where everybody can communicate. I hope I've answered. Okay. Thank you okay. very can much I for add? the answer. Uh, I would like to ask you related to this question. You said that communicate, communicate and communicate. What about the personalities who are introvert and they don't feel like to communicate after eight hours or nine hours of working? Please answer. Thank you. Oh. Interesting. You know, we are all introverts and we are all extroverts. And problem with introverts is that people try to draw them out. People try to break the bubble. Not everybody is able to. There are different types of communication. There are some, the extroverts talk about everything. They also talk about uh, irrelevant things. While introvert, just because they are introverted does not mean that they don't have an opinion. Maybe they are being passive. If they don't want to share it, don't draw them out, but at least show them that there is a place where they can, if need be. I, I have three kids and I wanted to know everything about their life, but you know, they even appreciate that they have never tried to force communication on them. And because of that, they've always come back and talk to me when they wanted. You can't force communication, especially in husband-wife relationships, if they are opposite, and usually they are. I've seen it 80 to 90% uh, of the time. One is more communicative than the other, and the other person has issues that the other person is not communicative. You can't force anything. They have a right to say or not say anything uh, if they want to. Do you understand? So there are ways you can draw... It's called reflective listening, <coughs> which is actually, uh, look it up, which is actually a way that you draw people in without them. You listen to them. Just listen to what they say and you ask them a question rather than saying, why don't you talk to me about it? You say, so why is it difficult? Am I the reason? You know, become an empath. An empath listener is a better communicator than a super, super all the time talking person. Communication skills means that you should be a good listener rather than a talker. Absolutely. And if you're intelligent, you can read between the lines as well. There are so many things 
body language is the best communication that we can get and not pushing anybody in a corner. I hope that answers your Sophie, question. Sophie, I'll take just 30 seconds. I think it's the responsibility of the head of the family. Culture comes from the top. Like in, in organizations, similarly at home too, culture comes from the top. You are the bread earner of the family. It's mighty wee time. Not at all. It's your responsibility. Garbage in, garbage out. If you shout at your kid, it will be a reciprocal phenomena. Your child will be talking to you with your voice. If you have a ledger, then your child will be talking to you with your ledger. If you do it, then it will be done tomorrow. And if you do it, then it will be done tomorrow. So this is on you, that you have to build up your home, your home, your culture, how do you build up your children? They are just like plants. If you don't want to cut the plant, then they will become a tree. You don't want to have a hard-dar tree at your home. Nobody wants. So culture comes from the top. You have so much effort in your offices for 12 hours. You have to put a day in your good communication. So that's a good thing. Very well said, Kamran sir. I appreciate it. But when it happens at home, when females start telling the man at home that you should do like this, then another argument starts. And it's true Deco, actually. Nahin, nahin, uh, well said, Asma. Ego wars, when there are ego wars, uh, when there's power play, there's not good communication. To actually have a good communication, you have to come to the level of the other person. If their egos are high, rather than going even higher to match their level, you, you bring both of them. And it is, the, it is the responsibility. Whoever is more powerful mentally, who's more intelligent, will find a way how to communicate. Um, there are a few other questions, uh, Zainab. Yeah, there's a question from Adil Ahmed. Do you suppose Pakistan has handled COVID better because PUKA has been a way of life with us for a long time? And there is another question from him that why did you need to head over, head towards the hills to combat COVID? Uh, very good question. One is a personal and the <laughs> other is my professional opinion. Thank you, Adil. You're always there to ask the most interesting questions. Um, the first is, I'll, uh, for all the non-Urdu speaking, I'll explain it. We have been in a chaos in Pakistan, one thing or the other. When 2008's recession came and it was having its impact, there was less in Pakistan and in the developing countries because we've always lived in a crisis situation. So I feel that I think Pakistan has handled it really well. Uh, keeping in mind the literacy rate, uh, the projections of people who think that it doesn't exist, the controversy theories, uh, etc. So I feel that we've handled it quite well. The second question, uh, thankfully, uh, when I moved from Dubai about two and a half years ago, uh, it was a compromise between Hasib and I. He wanted to live in Karachi, I wanted to live in Lahore. And we compromised on Bourbon. So I did not have to run away to the hills. The hills came to me. We have been there. Whenever need be, we go to the cities and we come back to relax and breathe the fresh air and bring Chashme Kapani uh, to bring health back to us. Any other questions? Then? No, there are no questions anymore. Uh, I think there's nothing in the chat box even. Uh, now I would like okay. to invite JJ for thank you note over here. JJ. Hello, can you see me? Yes, JJ. Yeah, okay. Uh, Assalamu alaikum, everybody. Uh, alaikum. Uh, yeah, I'd like to, you know, first of all, thank, uh, you know, Sofishan and Dr. Kamran for, um, you know, their, for their uh, interesting uh, insights about uh, how they feel, uh, how, how they think uh, uh, COVID has, has uh, impacted upon people's lives. And I'm just basically, you know, reflecting back on a book that I read in the initial uh, two, three months of, uh, of the COVID that came about in, I think, March of last year. It's a book called The Plague, written by Albert Camus. And this is a story written by, uh, by a doctor or a narration by a doctor, a fictional doctor, of course, 
uh, who basically was, uh, he placed himself in Spain at that time when there was the Spanish uh, flu which killed millions of people. Um, and surprisingly, as I was reading that book, as I went along, and I would recommend everyone to read it, everyone, uh, you know, the society even at that time without the digitization, without the internet, you know, they all had the same kind of concerns about life and where they are at and how to address this disease that they did not know much about, you know. So it is quite a, you know, quite an interesting book and it reflects a lot on our own thinking, which was there again, maybe this book was written, I think, in sometimes in 1880 or something. So for a book that was written at that time and for a disease that occurred at that time, which killed millions of people, a disease that has occurred again today, the reaction of people has been the same, irrespective of what uh, stage of uh, development technology they were at. The reaction remains the same in, in situations of uncertainty. So it's been a very, you know, very interesting cocktail, I would say, of a discussion between uh, Kamran and uh, Zofi Shan and the questions and the other, uh, you know, discussions that we had. Um, you see, what makes it interesting is it's a, it's not a presentation that was, you know, took a lot of time or it was a, a formal presentation using you know charts and things like that. It was just a conversation, and the conversation that was based upon you know facts, upon truth, upon upon you know on the spur of the moment. And I must over here also acknowledge that this program came about as an uh, it was inspired by Doc, by Atiyah Nawaz Ali, who is also a participant on on this um, group right now, who had a discussion with me and she said why why, why don't we talk about the effect of uh, of uh, of uh, the impact of uh, digitalization and COVID on people's lives, and you know she inspired us to come up with a with a with a presentation uh, between these two uh, guest speakers of today, and I would like to thank Ati also for uh, introducing um, us to something that was out of the box in terms of presentation in the corporate world. You know, so you know I would uh, also like to sort of uh, point out that we have not really touched much about digitalization because. I think that's a real impact. I mean, the, the, this COVID is here and we hope that it's going to go away. Um, but the digitalization is going to be impacting us much more severe. And we have not spoken about how it, is, how it has impacted old people, sick people, families, you know, who are not familiar with the, with the technology, children themselves during the COVID days, uh, sick patients. You know, I believe that people who are so much confined in houses that, you know, I believe there's a friend of ours whose, um, you know, whose uh, husband uh, went out. Uh, he was working from home, but he couldn't handle the chaos at home because of the kids and the woman and the wife and everybody. So he went in his car and he just put on the car and, you know, to generate the air condition. And he was working over this car eight hours in the whole day, you see. So there has been a lot of um, impact that COVID has had on people's lives and how they, you said, they, how resilient they were and how they managed to sort of overcome challenges uh, that impacted upon day to day, uh, you know, work and working life. You know, um, of course, we have not spoken about the travel plans, the holidays, uh, the teachers' issues, the students' issues, uh, which have been impacted by COVID and by digitization. So we will leave it for another time. But I take a little bit of a, <laughs> I wouldn't say objection, but Zofi, uh, uh, when you say that the man at the house became a beast, well, I, I don't know about that. I think it was just. I think you meant it in humor, in good humor. And of course, uh, divorce rates might have gone very high up in the Western world. I don't think in our world, you know, the impact has been so badly that people decided to divorce in the time. So in the short time that we had, uh, which was about 10 days back when Ati spoke to me on this, and then we spoke to, uh, to Zofi and uh, Dr. Saab, uh, I think within a week or we, uh, we brought about this program which we wanted to do it uh, quickly because of the holidays that are coming across in the next few days. So uh, once again, thank you, um, uh, Zofi. Thank you, Kamran. Thanks uh, to all the participants who have uh, been with us, uh, over 50 participants have been with us throughout this one hour, one hour, 10 minutes. And thank you. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Zainab. Thank you, uh, Sarim. Thank you, uh, Aisha. Thank you, the team of Tara for uh, you know, your contribution in delivering this program in the most simplest possible manner that we could have done in the short time that was given to all of us. Yeah. So once again, thank you, everyone. Thank you, thank you JJ. Thank you, Ati, also. Thank you, And JJ. thank you, Adil. I see quite a few of my friends over here. 
lost lost friends long lost friends rather uh, let me see uh, okay they've left by now you know anyways uh, everyone thanks and we hope to uh, see you uh, more often at, in our programs and uh, we we appreciate your giving us the support and encouragement to do more of these programs and share knowledge in a very informal manner thank you jay jay sahab a quick thought on what you just yes. said if you permit please aapne wo beast in the house ki baat ki na so we got to understand that wo jo ghar hai wo actually domain to begam ki hai na so the man is intruding by staying at home so he needs to behave <laughs> wo beast bana apna they look at the lady of the house is rules you know so wo beast, uh, yes uh, but the uh, man doesn't have to behave in a beastly manner <laughs> yeah yeah it's what he has to do and what he does or what she has to do and what she does are totally different things and i agree with you adil the beast could be either gender because of the stresses and everything but trust me uh, even with youngsters uh, they used to either joke and uh, this was the usual meme again on relationships that i want a divorce as soon as this pandemic is over of course there is an exaggeration because then people really need to pull up their socks uh, more so than ever when they are uh, 24/7 in each other's eyes and uh, next time we'll do on digitization as well because there was little time uh, uh, there was enough to discuss on the impact of covid on relationship would love to do that again jj one last question from everybody uh, which i discussed with zainab as well that how long do you want these talks to be because with 10 i mean i had just 40 minutes and there's so much to say and i generally don't drag things but would love to know that uh, if you could write down in the chat how long would an ideal talk be and the next time we shall keep that in mind thank you jj thank you adil zena aisha sarim octara team i really enjoyed being with you and a big big thank you to everybody who joined us you take care <laughs> you warriors the future is here thank you zena uh, thank you zofi for the beautiful you know window that is open up into the greenery behind the mountains behind giving us a glimpse of a good life you're having say hello to us i will thank you zofi shah jj adil saab dr kamran and all the participants and the the question which you asked zofi shah they are saying it should be like 60 to 90 minutes of the session and now i just want to share a screen in which i would like to share our upcoming programs with you so in august as jj said that this is like a this was a rush up session but we had planned it in august but now we are having other programs in august which is an online training by aligning budgeting and strategy with amir qureshi it's on august 11th it's an online training then we have a workshop by on interpersonal communication skills using disc by fazia kirai it's on 12th august it's in karachi and then we have a zoominar on branding and brand equity with kashif afendi on 25th of august and on these participation like in the online training and workshop if you participate you will get on to tcs octara loyalty card which gives you a 15% discount on other participate on other workshops and also there are other benefits which is given by our business units from tcs and if you want to ask okay so if you want to participate or register or anything related to octara you can contact our colleague sarim atik on these details and i would like you all to join us on our octara linkedin page which has all the uh, details related to our uh, programs upcoming programs other benefits which we give so you can just uh, scan the qr code and which will lead you to our octara's linkedin page thank you everyone and uh, thank you for your participation over here and i would like to say eid ul azha mubarak in advance to everybody and follow all the sops for your loved ones thank you thank you take care i would like to thank you thank octara for arranging such a wonderful and uh, mind blowing uh, session i really uh, like zofia zofian uh, talking on this topic today thank you thank you godam sir